than drunk on one occasion. You were, in fact, an alcoholic, were you? Yes, I did a lot of drinking, a great deal, a very great deal indeed, Michael, yes. You were an alcoholic? You can safely say yes. I did do a very great deal. Yeah, why yes. was that, do you think? Ah, uh, I think... Well, I don't know, really, the answer to that. Uh, deep inside, I, I think, actually, that I was insecure. I didn't really feel that I'd uh, deserved the success that I'd achieved, as it were. I think that was it. Who was laughing at that? Yes. <laughs> Strange reaction. I'll come and sort you out later on. That's right. Anyway, uh, you, I you, think that was the reason. Uh, some sort of insecurity. After all, I was the one of the group that hadn't... That I was a grammar school boy, you know. I wasn't a uh, public school. I managed to get to Cambridge. Then I felt a little bit out of my depth there, perhaps. I don't know. But I always seemed to get there. Never seemed to have to do a great deal of work. And yet managed. And I, I felt it was insecure. So I drank. And how much at, at, your, at your peak, so to speak, how much were you drinking? Um, four pints of gin a day. Oh. Four pints of gin a day? Yes, that's... that was only during the last month and a half or so. That's almost a sort of terminal dose, isn't it, I would think? Pretty much, pretty much, yes. Mm. Yeah. What, what, uh, what pulled you back from, from it and made you stop drinking? Because you've been drying Well, I noticed, uh, actually, that uh, it was beginning to affect my work, um, because... <laughs> 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 on the, uh... You mean when you remember it, it was a... <laughs> <laughs> when I could run my work, even. Um, yep, the very first day of filming of the Holy Grail. In fact, we were halfway up a mountainside in Glencoe, and I hadn't got my, uh, my daily dose. And it was seven o'clock in the morning that we left the hotel. The bar wasn't open. I hadn't realised this. I hadn't got anything prepared the night before, as I should have if I'd researched my drinking properly. Uh, and so I had DTs on the mountainside, uh, while having to try and remember lines and uh, stand up, you know. It was uh, uh, then that I decided next time that I do a job like this, I'm going to be clean for it. Uh, it's not fair to the other chaps in the group. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to what I've written. Um, it's very stupid. And uh, so when I next had uh, a, a patch of time in which I thought I would need to, to recover, I took that patch of time and, uh, and recovered after... Well, I suppose really three days of hell. Yes, I was going to say, how difficult was it? Uh, actually, once the decision had been made, once I'd decided to stop, it was easy, except for the, for the three days of, uh, of unpleasantness, of, um, well, having things crawling all over me and... Uh, Literally, I mean... Hallucinating it... and that sort of thing. Very Could... unpleasant. Then after that, um, a, a week in hospital, um, just um, cooling off on Valium. And uh, I've been fine ever since. You, in fact, of course, too, you, you are very great friends, and you write about him lovingly, actually, mm. in, in the book with Keith Moon, yeah. who killed himself, of course, through, through drink. Well, that's right. I was, during the last year of Keith's life, he was, uh, he was attempting to dry out quite a lot. I was drying out with him. We were, in fact, involved in a mutual project. And uh, I, I saw him... Uh, Drought. In fact, I went to uh, his hospital bedside and on a couple of occasions just after he'd had a little, um, a little uh, uh, epileptic, epileptic form, I suppose, epile uh, epileptic fit of some description. And um, following withdrawal of alcohol, and uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to have to do that someday, I'm going to have to. But the tragic thing was, was seeing Keith go back to drinking. You see, he didn't really, actually, had never really decided to quit, to stop. And it has to come from you, I think. Yes. You have to it's want to. It's your decision. Well, either you're going to live or, or not. You know, that's yes. it. Mm. Yes. Graham, the, the interesting thing about uh, your book, um, one of the most fascinating accounts in it, is, is how you came to terms with your homosexuality mm. and how you, in fact, decided to tell your friends about it. Um, how long did it take you to, to decide, if you like, to come out the closet, to use the common expression? Uh, I didn't like being dishonest, really, and I was um, having to be. Um, I, I don't... Well, I, I, I thought I had to be, uh, because I didn't think that people around me would understand. Um, it took me some time to understand. After all, this was uh, when I was about 25, uh, at 24, I was thinking of getting married. I had a steady girlfriend. Um, we'd been together for about a year. And then suddenly I found that that wasn't quite what I really wanted, deep down inside. Uh, and so to explain to uh, 
uh, to John Cleese, our best friend at the time, um, a very upright gentleman indeed, and uh, very English in very many ways, especially so, I suppose, living next to the Welsh border. Uh, <laughs> he was uh, not the sort of person to, I thought, take very kindly to a little piece of news like that about a friend of his that used to smoke a pipe and play rugby and climb rocks and things like that. It, he was rather shocked, actually, although his girlfriend uh, um, was much more understanding, understood and um, explained a little bit to him that it wasn't necessarily the end of my life. You, in fact, in the book, you, you, you describe how you, in fact, you threw a party for the for yeah. friends, for the Python team. That's right. I thought the only way to do it was just to get it over with once and for all, invite everyone around that I worked with and, uh, and, and let them know. There and, were varied uh, reactions. Yes, there were. David Frost couldn't make it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The, the reactions were, yes, wonderful. Uh, Marty, Marty Feldman was, was, was he just laughed. Um, it, 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 it was the pipe that made him laugh, really. <laughs> in, in conjunction with uh, what he normally expected uh, such a person to be, you know. Uh, um, and what about your parents, Graham? Because you, you, you told them as well. What, what yes. kind of reaction did you have? That must have been the most difficult That was pretty life. horrific, difficult to do. And they, they were marvellous, actually. They were very good. I, I mean, it was difficult for me. It needn't have been. Um, very understanding. Your father, of course, is a policeman, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Was a policeman. Was a policeman. Yeah. And his reaction to you was what? Well, uh, I told my mother first, and um, uh, she was very upset, uh, largely because of the effect she thought it would have on my father, and so insisted that I didn't tell my father, and I insisted that I should. Anyway, eventually she prevailed and, uh, and I didn't. They left uh, the apartment where I was living, went home. And uh, a week later, I had to ring my, my father. And he said that he'd, um, mother hadn't been sleeping at all for the last week and eventually had prized out of her what it was that had been bothering her. And uh, he said, uh, don't worry, she just doesn't understand about these things. Which was wonderful. That's what mums and dads are for, I suppose. Yeah. 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 And had you, I mean, it must have been a difficult decision to make from another point of view. It might sound silly, but it obviously must have affected your thinking. And that is for any performer, actually, anybody in the public eye, to admit something like that, even given the, the sort of conditions of today, it was a fairly brave thing to do, I think. Mm, was it a feeling at the back of your mind that it might not work again, yes. Yes, and, and has it had, this was coming to, has it had any effect in that, in that way? No, I don't think so. People are much more tolerant than, uh, than you imagine, actually. Well, not than you imagine, but than uh, we, as a mass, imagine. Really, I've never had any problem yes. uh, in that direction. Um, neither have I to, to return to... Uh, you might expect us to have had a great deal of trouble with the, with the recent movie, Life of Brian, for instance, but uh, because of its controversial nature. But um, there again, none, really. Yes. Because actually, it's a good film. Yes. And I think that's the same with what used to be considered a problem. It's um, a natural thing.